Let's go ahead and take a look at the menu implementation next. Go ahead and open the fourth step file for the trails module. It's called hook menu. Go ahead and copy the entire thing. And again, paste it into your trails.module file, overriding everything else, and save it. Everything is the same on this page, except for the hook menu implementation. So let's go ahead and take a look this line by line. We've seen a couple implementations of hook menu in previous modules to do exactly what we're doing right here, which is creating a settings form for a module. Now, if you remember at the beginning of this video, we had a configuration form that allowed us to set the maximum possible number of items allowed to be chosen in the block configuration form. So it was a configuration form for a configuration form. Hopefully that's not too confusing. And so here is where we set that path. So as you may remember from a previous video, the hook menu function expects an array of items to be returned. And we set the path of the item, the key to each item in the array. So we just have one item here and the path is admin slash config slash trails. One advantage to adding your configuration in the admin slash config section is that it will be automatically incorporated with the other settings pages on the site. And I'll show you how that works after we go through this. We're setting the title of the page to trails. We're setting a description of the page. We're setting a page callback function to Drupal get form. And we'll go over this in more detail in the forms API video. But basically what this says is go ahead and take a look at what we set for page arguments, find the function defined there, which is trails admin settings and pull the array that gets returned from that, which will be a form settings array. And then pass that array to the function Drupal get form. It sounds a little complex, but once we look at that process in the forms API section, you'll see just how simple that is. Next, we have access arguments, which is where we define who has access to this page. And this is where our hook permissions come in. We're passing in an array and the item that we're passing it is administer trails. And if we take a look up here, administer trails is one of the permissions that we set. So if a user has the administer trails permission, they'll be able to visit this page. Otherwise they'll get a 403 access denied page instead. We're setting an external file for this page function. And if you remember from previous videos, we do this so that that code isn't loaded on every page. We can just load it when somebody visits this path and we're setting that to trails.admin.inc. And the file path is where Drupal can expect to find this file. And we're using the Drupal get path function, which allows us to get the path regardless of where the user is in the file structure. And we're passing a first parameter of module, which says we're looking for a module rather than a theme. We can also get theme paths this way. And trails is the name of the module. And finally, we're returning the items. We'll go over various implementations of hook menu in another video or a review if you've already watched some of the previous videos. Let's take a look at the trails.admin.inc file real quick and see what's in there. Now, like I mentioned, this function should return an array, which is then used by the form API to render a form. And all we're doing is setting a single input that allows us to select the maximum number of items that a user can select in the block configuration page. So here we're setting a form element and we're giving it the name of trails block max. We're setting it a type of select. So this will be a select input. We're giving it a title, which is actually the label of the input of maximum number of items to display. We're giving it a list of options and we're using a nice little Drupal API function called Drupal map associ, which is short for associative and we're passing it an array from zero to 200. And we're establishing this array without individually adding each number to an array by using a PHP function called range. And range will return an array that lists every number from the initial number to the ending number. And then Drupal map associative will then 
create an associative array out of a non-associative array by copying the key to the value. Because the options parameter expects an associative array, which includes the name of each item as well as the value, we need to convert that non-associative array to an associative one. Next, we're setting the default value, and we're using the variable get function, which is the same function that we used in hook init in order to get our history trail. And we're grabbing the variable trails block max. Now you may notice that this is the same name as our form name here. Because we're returning this form by running it through a function called system settings form, which you see down here, any form item that we pass through this function will be saved as a variable. So when we go to reload the form, we want to load what its current value is, and we do that by getting the variable. Next, we have the description, which is a little bit of help text for the input, and finally a required, which, set, which sets whether this item is required or not. Finally, we run it through the system settings form, and we'll go over this function and what exactly it gives you in the form API section. So go ahead and make sure that your trails.module file is saved, and now let's visit that configuration form. If you remember from previous discussion, whenever we add a new menu item, we need to clear our cache because hook menu only runs at a few particular times, and that includes installation, whenever a module is installed, or whenever the update process is run, and finally, whenever the cache is cleared. So we're gonna clear the cache by going to configuration, development, and performance. And next we're going to click clear all caches. Now if you remember just a couple of minutes ago I said by adding our path to admin slash config we get to put our settings form in a place that people can expect to find it. So if we hover over configuration here we now see along with these other configuration options our trails item. If we click this we'll see we have our form here and we can change this to whatever we'd like up to that 200 mark that we set and click save configuration and it will save this. Now right now this configuration item isn't really doing anything because this will come into play once we have a block that's displaying our data and that's coming a little later.